How do you set up tax lot distribution on Fidelity? In this video, I will jump onto my laptop to show you exactly how to get that set up so you can do proper tax planning. And of course, this is something that Robinhood does not allow you to do. If you are still debating whether or not you should switch from Robinhood to Fidelity, check out these resources right here because there are a lot of reasons of why you should make that change. Let's get into it. It's actually relatively easy to set up your cost basis. So this is the link that I'm also going to provide. And basically I just go to this page of Fidelity. Of course, you can also uh, search it in here. And under account feature, you can see here is cost basis information and tracking. And here I have two portfolios. The account numbers are of course uh, blurred out. And over here, um, cost basis, actual cost, default disposal method over here, you can see I have elected for a low cost long term. And when you change here, it actually shows you um, a change default disposal method. This includes positions and or mutual funds with a differing disposal method. Do you want to change this? And um, over here, the cost basis, you can also uh, convert this cost basis, but um, I do not want to convert this because I do want the average cost and not the specific shares method. You can learn more about what all these means. For example, um, the cost basis, there are two methods. The average cost is just taking the total cost and dividing it by the number of shares in the fund. So here's an example, three shares of five, six, and $7. Using the average cost method, it will add up all of this and dividing it by three, which means it will be an average of six. The actual cost though, it is the actual purchase price of each share. And so you'll have to know the actual purchase price of each share, it can be tricky. This can be tricky, especially if you purchase shares at different prices and you're not sure exactly which shares are sold. And by default, Fidelity uses FIFO first and first out when they are selling your shares. But this can also be changed. So let me go back here. So the default is first and first out, but I can change this. And um, I can also convert all of this. And um, this is what I change into the low cost long term. So I want to first sell the low cost in the long term investments. So investments that I have held for over a year. And this is better for my tax planning purposes. And for my HSA, I just didn't do much. It's first in, first out. But then I don't really plan on selling my HSA investments in the short run. And um, of course, like for any of this, you can choose to change it. And then over here, you can see the different description of what each of this is. First in, first out is the default, and it is just selling whatever you purchased first. Intraday, first in, first out are used for shares purchased today, and they're sold first. Once all of these that are purchased today have been sold, then this reverts to first in, first out. Last and first out LIFO is shares that are most recently purchased. So the last ones in are sold first, regardless of the cost basis. High cost shares with the greatest cost basis are sold first. And in a real life application, why would you want to do this? It's probably because maybe right now you are in a very high tax bracket and you don't want to... Um, incur as much capital gains tax. That could be one of the reasons. If more than one lot has the same price, the lot with the earliest acquisition date is sold first. And uh, high cost, long term. So this specifically starts with your long term holding period. So anything that you've held for more than a year, these are sold first, beginning with those with the greatest cost basis. So again, you want to minimize your capital gains tax. And over here, high cost, short term shares with a short term holding period are sold first, beginning with those with the greatest cost basis. So um, this is doing it with the short term basis, low cost, lowest cost are sold first. So you might want to do this if currently you are in a lower tax bracket temporarily, then this would make sense. Low cost, long term, same thing. Um, but then you want to focus on your long term holdings because you still want to minimize your capital gains tax. 
and then low cost short term, um, very similarly. But then in this case, you're not too worried about your long term capital gains tax versus short term capital gains tax. Your short term capital gains tax is usually at a higher percentage. And um, of course, you can do it by tax sensitive. So shares with the lowest tax cost per share are sold first, starting with shares that have a loss. So this is um, also called tax loss harvesting. And then tax sensitive short term, um, this is usually used for global investments and the global rate of 35% for short term and 15% for long term is used to calculate the tax liability of each lot. So read more about this if you are interested, but what I've elected for my two accounts are low cost, long term, and first in, first out. So far in the video, you have learned how do you set up those tax laws and how do you do proper tax planning with your Fidelity setting. While you wait for next week's video, I post other content about personal finance, stock market investing, and luxury living. So be sure you check out these two videos as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.